One of the questions that people often ask, not just me, but pretty much any computer user that shares the specs of their computers, is, hey, why do you need all that? I just see this all over the internet. Somebody will share the specs of their computers, and immediately people ask them, hey, why do you have such a beefy machine? You don't need all that. Well, you don't need 64 gigs of RAM and, you know, dual CPUs. You don't need quad GPUs or whatever it is in their machine that, you know, just seems outrageous. And, and people want to question that person about their computer. So in my videos, I often show HTOP running in a terminal. And inside HTOP, you guys see that I have a 12 core, 24 thread thread ripper for a CPU. And I have 64 gigs of RAM. And the 64 gigs of RAM is the one that really throws people off because they're like 64 gigs of RAM. Why do you need all that? Why do you need all that RAM? Or sometimes they'll just flat out say, you don't need all that RAM. You're just throwing money away. And I'm just like, well, what do you mean? <laughs> I don't need all that RAM. Obviously I needed all that RAM. I wouldn't have spent hundreds and hundreds of dollars on 64 gigs of RAM if I didn't need all those RAM sticks. I get it. You know, for what you guys do on your computers, the people asking this question, it probably is confusing to them why somebody would need all that RAM because they probably have a laptop that's got four gigs of RAM and all they do is look at the face page inside Google Chrome and all they need is four gigs of RAM to do that. But for what I do, I often actually use most of that RAM because I run applications that can actually make use of all that RAM. For example, my video editor, Caden Live, can sometimes take up 30 to 32 gigs of RAM by itself when it's rendering video. And, you know, so that's why I have all that RAM is because of what I do for video production. People that do 3D modeling and things like Blender, you know, Blender can use all of that RAM. Virtualization. I can run half a dozen VMs on my main production machine while recording. And why can I do that? It's because I have all those threads and processes from my CPU that I can divvy up into all those VMs. And I have 64 gigs of RAM that I can divvy up between all those VMs and still have some left over for my main production machine to still do a recording of all of that. Now, I couldn't do that <laughs> if I had, you know, just a standard machine that's got four to eight gigs of RAM. I couldn't do any of this. I just think it's strange when people ask other people, hey, why do you need all that? And the way they ask it, they're insinuating that you don't really need it. And they're not genuinely curious what you do with your computer. They're just insinuating, hey, man, you're just showing off. You, you wasted all that money on all that stuff you bought because I guess in some way, this person having a better machine than this other person, that other person feels inferior in some way because they have a $400 laptop that they bought off the shelf at Best Buy. And this other person, you know, has this a custom built rig that they built themselves with this custom liquid cooling loop and multiple GPUs and you know, 128 gigs of RAM or whatever, you know, crazy specs this thing has. And, you know, $400 laptop from Best Buy person, I guess, feels inferior in some way. So they want to bring that other person down right about their machine. They want to bring them down a little bit. And, you know, that's a, a character flaw that I see way too many people have, not just in the Linux community or the computer community at large, but, you know, that's just a, a general human emotion is, you know, sometimes we just want to bring somebody down because we're feeling bad. You know, some way we've got some issues that we have to work out. But if I can find somebody else that looks like they're doing okay and I try to bring them down a little bit it might make me feel a little better one of the other comments that I don't understand is when I talk about pieces of software being bloated because they use too much CPU or they use too much RAM and then people make that comment well unused RAM is wasted RAM well I, that makes absolutely no sense. There's no way the people making that comment actually think that you should be using 100% of your RAM all the time. It's basically, they're saying that your computer should be running out of memory all the time. 100% like of your memory should be loaded all the time on your computer. And obviously, you know, your computer couldn't function like that. So nobody really thinks that. So why are they making these comments insinuating that? It's like I often talk about the GNOME desktop environment, how heavy it is. It'll take 1.2 gigs of RAM on a cold boot. And that's just way too much for a desktop environment or window manager to take on a cold boot. And people are like, well, you got all that RAM, right? On DT's machine, he's got 64 gigs of RAM. Why is he worried about the 1.2 gigs that GNOME takes loading up? Well, I've already told you that certain applications can actually use all of my RAM. I can use all that RAM in things like Caden Live and Blender and virtualization programs like VirtualBox and Vert Manager. You know, and if I want to use all of my RAM in those programs, I can't have 
an unusual amount of RAM taken up by this other stuff that really shouldn't be taking it up, like the GNOME desktop environment. So that's why people complain about certain pieces of software being bloated and being out of control. It's because they're trying to have as little CPU and as little RAM taken up by those basic processes that are running on your machine so that you can actually use it for the programs that you really need to do your work in. One of the comments I often get from viewers of the channel is about that audio server rack behind me. I often get the question is, hey, man, why do you have all of that audio equipment? You don't need all of that audio equipment to just make YouTube videos. You can just walk around in your backyard with your cell phone. Just do a backyard boomerang like everybody else. You don't need good audio. And they're right. Yes, I could do that. But I like playing with audio, right? I like playing with that audio hardware. I also like playing with audio editing, audio software. You know, I just like audio stuff and it's not like it's wasted money on this stuff to get good audio there's benefits to it even on video but especially if i was doing audio only podcasting for example you know you guys would not see anything on video right you're not going to see the boomer backyard rant you know somebody walking around with a camera in his backyard all you're going to do is hear that person's voice and it makes sense to try to get the best possible audio if you're doing audio only podcasting. I mean, that really kind of is what separates, you know, a good podcast from the ones that are not so good because when it's all about the audio, if, if it's bad audio, nobody's going to listen. Anyway, I don't want to ramble on too long on this topic today. I really wasn't planning on making a video today, but I wanted to speak on this because I see way too many people in the Linux community and really the computer community at large, especially when you get on hardware forums, hardware discussions, and people start sharing their computer specs. And you get these people asking this, why do you need all that kind of question? And if you're one of these people that have ever asked that, I, I seriously want you to think about why you ask that question because do you really want to an answer to that question i don't think you do when you ask that question i think you're just trying to make a snarky comment <laughs> to somebody and you know what does that say about you now before i go i want to thank a few special people I need to thank Devin, Fran, Gabe, Corbinia, Mitchell, Akami, Harch5530, Chris, Chuck, Donnie, Dylan, Gregory, Lewis, Paul, PickVM, Scott, and Willie. They are the producers of the show. They are my highest tier patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this rant about really nothing at all <laughs> wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because DistroTube is sponsored by you guys, the community. If you'd like to support my work, Look for DT over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.